suddenly um, their heart rhythm can change and they will become the most acute and you have to reassign nurses to make sure that everybody's life is safe, especially if there's a disaster or patients um, get into a car crash, um, we are going to quickly reassign people to make sure that the most experienced nurses are taking care of the most highest acuity patients. And sometimes too, it's not the patient's situation, sometimes it's the nurse's situation. Sometimes all of a sudden, a nurse get a bad news, get a phone call and they got a bad news from home and they want to cry. You have to stop everything and take them in your office office and be um, the person who is really um, talking to them and making sure they are okay, they can drive home safely or someone has to drive them. Or sometimes you have a family member who comes in and they are drunk and they don't understand what you are doing and they want their mom to have Coca-Cola and they want their mom to have ice cream, but that is what brought them in the hospital in the first place. They, they're not eating well and the doctor has written a diet for them. And this son who came in is ready to hit somebody and then the manager has to hurry and call security and sometimes we have to call the police. And so your work has no end and it has no definition. Um, but it's fun. It's a, a job area where we have men and women working hand in hand, young and old. On my department, I have people aged 22 through 64 all working there. And so you have to know a little more about gender, um, you know, I mean, generational differences to treat everybody according to what really makes them happy and satisfied to work there. Um, sometimes the most difficult times that I have had, the most difficult days I have had, is when I have to do a corrective action. The hospitals or healthcare organizations have policies. For example, one of the policies is that if you are sick, you're calling in sick so many times that the patient's safety is not assured, the manager has to fire you. So when I have to fire someone or I have to call them and um, have a difficult conversation with them to say, hey, um, Jones or, you know, Miller, you have been sick seven times the last 12 months. And so we have to talk about this. You call someone in your office, you don't know their anger management situation. They can kill you. They can hit you. But I'm supposed to talk to them and make sure that everyone is compliant with the hospital policies and sometimes some of them you fire them they go and they find a lawyer and then he sends <laughs> and then he will send a letter to the human resources and say we want an investigation this manager uh, fired Miller and wasn't supposed to and then I have to go to the risk management department and write my version of what occurred so every day is different and I just pray my way through that God will help me to go through each single day regardless of what comes and so far he has been faithful. Thank you. A day in the life of a physician depends on what the physician uh, does. Like after medical school and after your training, you can branch into many aspects of the profession. Some go into industry, the drug industry, regulatory industry, they work with the FDA. Some um, go into teaching as professors uh, at the university. Some do public health where basically they, are, they don't have any contact with patients. And then we have a, a clinical medicine. Okay, when you are in clinical medicine, that's when you take care of patients. And that also depends on your field of specialty. If you are a surgeon, uh, you see patient and you go to the operating room and then after that you do care after the operation. But in my field as a cardiologist, um, my typical day, uh, I run a rotatory shift. That is one week I'm in the hospital, the following week I'm the, in the office, then two weeks in the room in the office and then the third week I'm back in the hospital. So. 
Tomorrow morning, for instance, I'm in the hospital. So early morning at 8 o'clock, my partner who is in the hospital this weekend will call me and say, Michael, we have these patients. We, ask, we, ask, we work as a team. We have a team of 16 cardiologists. So two people are on call for the weekend. And three of us will be in the hospital tomorrow morning. So they'll call the three of us and give us the patients who are in the hospital. So tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock, we call a sign-out. They'll give me the list. And the problems the patients came in while they're in the hospital, I'll be covering Pioneer Valley, Jordan Valley, and then the St. Mark's. So give me a rundown of the patients and said, this is what the patient came in, this is what I've done, this is what you have to take over from here. So you go in, you see the patient, assess the patient, what their needs are, you treat them, and then when they are ready to go, you make arrangements for the patients to go home. And sometimes, at the time that you decide that the patient is ready to go home, then you realize the patient has no place to go to. Or the family situation at home is not conducive for the patient to go home. Then you call the social worker. They said, this is the problem we have. This patient, and of course, you can't keep the patient in the hospital forever. The patient has to go home. The family situation is not ideal. The patient cannot go home. Then the social worker will come in and look into the family dynamics and then come up with a recommendation and said, if the patient can go home no, or not. Sometimes you are ready to send the patient home, then the nurse will come to you and say, no, I don't think the patient can go home because of A, B, C, D. Then you have to listen to them. You shouldn't think that you know everything. No, no one knows everything. And you have to be humble enough to learn from everybody. So the nurses can also teach you, especially the ones who have been in the uh, feel for a long time, they have a lot of experience. So they will tell you, no, I don't think the patient can go home because they have a fever. Mm -hmm. Then you say, okay, let's look into the why the patient is having a fever. Because as a patient, the patient might come to the hospital with one problem, then another problem will rise up. And in the night when you are sleeping, the nurses are there who are taking care of the patient. So certain things can go on that you may not be aware. So you have to listen to them so the patient cannot go home. They have to address all those problems to make sure the patient is safe to go home. Because you don't want to rush, send the patient home, and then they make a U-turn and come back to the hospital. In fact, this is, uh, the government is even be becoming strict about that, that they will penalize the, hus the hospital if the patient turn around and come back within a certain time frame. So within uh, 30 days of sending the patient, they are coming back to the hospital. They, they, they decided that they are not going to pay the hospital for the subsequent care. It means you didn't do a good job. You, you send the patient home too soon. So you have to look at all the pieces to make sure the patient is okay. Can they afford their medications? And if they can't, are there any services in the community that can provide the patient with the medication? Because if they go home and they don't take the medications, they are just going to come back. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that I'll be doing all week. And then during the week, covering one hospital after the other, the paramedics bring in patients. They will send, uh, they, will, they are called to the field, they will pick the patient, and they will send a message to the emergency room. So we are bringing this patient in. Then they will uh, carry this pager. They will send me a message. This patient is coming in. And the patient is coming from home or in the field, you don't know what they are coming in with. Sometimes they come in, they can't talk to you. They're just lying there. No relatives are around to give you any history. You don't know what is going on. You have never seen the patient before. If you know the patient, at least you have an idea what may be going on. But if the patient is new to you, you don't know what you are dealing with. And sometimes in those situations, you have to pray. And you have to bless the Lord, help me in this situation. I don't know what, what to do. And sometimes, I mean, you'll be amazed that God will listen to you and give you clues that do this, do this. And the decision that you make are also split-second decisions, life and death decisions. Sometimes you have to give a medication quickly to revive a patient. The medication that you're giving the patient, the patient may react adversely to the medicine. You don't know because it has not been exposed to the chemical before. And uh, medications are also given in certain amounts. If it's a small kid, you have to give a certain amount different from what you give to a big person. So all these are things that you have to know and learn. And if you don't know, don't be, I mean, proud to ask for help. You can call your colleague. Have you en encountered this situation before? I, I mean, I, I mean, Christ, I don't know what to do. And they will share with you. So, oh, I ha maybe I, I, I came across this experience sometime ago. This is what I did. 
So you always have to talk to your colleagues, and people will call you and say, can you give me any ideas? I need a second opinion. Okay, these are all things that you have to do. Then 